Okay, in today's class we state the portfolio optimization problem and then in the next class we will actually solve it using Microsoft Excel Solver. So what is the portfolio optimization problem or portfolio choice problem? Suppose you are an investor and you have some money and you want to invest. You face several assets, let's say there are n assets available in the market, but of course Asset returns are random, so you don't know how well they will perform. But you can get some information about the returns. By the way, if you are not familiar with what return means, then revise a previous class about asset return. But anyway, so you want to invest your money, so you ask your portfolio manager or portfolio consultant for information about the expected returns and also risk information of these N assets. You know, some assets are high risk, high return. Other assets are low risk, low return. So such information is useful. Yes? So your portfolio advisor gives you the expected return vector, mu, which is a vector of n numbers. The first number corresponds to the expected return of the first asset, and the second number corresponds to the expected return of the second asset and so on, up to the nth asset. Because there are n assets, the risk information is given by an n by n matrix, which is called variance-covariance matrix. In this variance-covariance matrix, the n diagonal elements correspond to the variances of n asset returns. So the first diagonal element is the variance of the first asset, and so on. The last diagonal element is the variance of the nth asset's return. And all diagonal elements give you covariance information. Yeah, in a previous class, we studied what expectations and risk information should look like if there are n random variables. The expectation is a vector, mu, and the risk information is given by a matrix, D. Now, mu and v are given to the investor. There is nothing the investor can do about them. What investor can choose is the portfolio weights, which we denote by w. So w is a vector of weights. The first number is the proportion of money to be invested in the first asset. The second number is the proportion of money invested in the second asset, and so on. So there are n numbers here. And of course, these weights, W, should sum up to 1. Sometimes I express this weight vector in the form of a row vector, that is, horizontally. Then I use this notation W prime. Sometimes I put it vertically in the form of a column vector, and in that case I use simply W. So prime simply means transpose in today's class. But both W and W prime are just a vector of weights. So choosing a portfolio basically means choosing the W. In a previous class, we studied what the expectation of a portfolio return should look like, and we studied this inner product expression mu times W. So once you decide on the weight vector W, mu times W is the expectation of your portfolio return. In another class, we studied what the risk of a portfolio return should look like. And we started this sandwich form where the variance covariance matrix is sandwiched by the coefficient vector, the weight vector. So this is the variance of your portfolio return, W, V, W, and this is the expectation of your portfolio return, mu times W. And of course, there is trade-off. You want the expectation of your portfolio return to be as high as possible and at the same time, you want the risk, the variance of your portfolio return, as small as possible. So one type of portfolio optimization problem tries to minimize the risk, setting the minimal acceptable expected return on the portfolio. So this is the formulation. Choose the portfolio weights to minimize the risk of the portfolio, subject to the expected return of the portfolio being no smaller than 10%, and the weights 
summing up to 1. This 10% is something the investor should choose. If you want the expected return to be high, then you cannot get very small risk. But if you can tolerate very small expected return, then you can make the risk very small. Now, second type of portfolio choice problem is to maximize the expected return of the portfolio, setting the maximal acceptable risk of the portfolio. Here, remember the variance. This is the variance of the portfolio return, and the variance is the square of the standard deviation. So in this example, the maximal acceptable level of the standard deviation is set to be 30%. Of course, this number 30% is totally up to you. If you can tolerate more risk, then this 30% can be higher, and that way the expected return achieved should be higher. And this last constraint is the same as above. The sum of the weights should be equal to 1. The third problem looks pretty much like the second problem. You are choosing weights to maximize the expected return of the portfolio, setting the maximal acceptable variance of your portfolio. But it has one more constraint, which says all the weights should be non-negative. In the above two problems, although the weights sum up to 1, some of the weights can be actually negative. Suppose you invest 10,000 pounds, suppose W1 needs 0.1. That means that 10% of your money is invested in asset 1. Now suppose W2 is negative 0.1. That means that you short sell 1,000 pounds worth of asset 2 to raise 1,000 pounds and spend that money on some other assets. If you forgot what short selling is, we studied this in a previous class, so please revise it. If you are a very large financial institution, probably you can do some short selling. But short selling by individual investors is really constrained. So it is reasonable to add non-short selling constraint to the portfolio choice problem by saying that all the weights should be greater than or equal to zero. In the next class, we are going to solve these problems using the Microsoft Excel solver.